Greetings, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer AME Virtual Church. We are the virtual church serving Christ and the community. We worship each Sunday under the anointed leadership of Pastor Gilbert A. Ruffin, Jr. We are so glad you decided to join us today. So sit back, relax, and prepare your heart and mind to hear a word from the Lord. Welcome to Christ Our Redeemer. Christ our Redeemer. Welcome to Christ our Redeemer. Well, praise the Lord, Christ our Redeemer. We are so glad to be here one more day, one more Sunday, one more uh, Lord's Day to celebrate the Lord one more time. We thank God for all that God has done in this season of our lives during this past week. Uh, there may have been ups and downs in the week, but we thank God for bringing us through to, to the day so we can celebrate the Lord with all we got. We thank God that how God has just continued to bless us in spite of us, how God has been able to just continue to keep us through the times of trouble, how God has just continued to bless us in spite of the hurts and pains of our lives, the past of our lives. We thank God for the today and know that the future is bright because God is in us. God lives in us and keeps us each and every day. You ought to give God praise for blessing you one more time. You ought to give God a, a, a worship for clothing you in your right mind, allowing you to see yet another day, giving you breath in your body, blood running warm in your vein. God, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for loving us so, God. And we commit this service over to you, this worship experience over to you right now. God, we worship you in spite of what we're going through. God, we we, we worship you, God, in, in the good times and the bad times. God, we love you and we thank you for all that you're doing. God, in the life of your church and in the life of your people, God, continue to keep us now as we hear from heaven, God, as you share a word with us, God, we thank you for it. We thank you, God, that lives are going to be changed, minds are going to be renewed, hearts are going to be made brand new, God. People will be transformed as a result of your word. Now, God, do it because only you can. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, saints, it is a blessing to be here, Christ our Redeemer, in the virtual space one more time to preach what thus saith the Lord. I am thankful to for the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk once again uh, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, the truth of God's word into our lives. I'm praying and believing that God will use me in a mighty way today to be a blessing to you and to be a blessing to the community at large. We thank God for all that God is doing in the life of this church and in the life of his church throughout the land. And we thank God for just continuing to keep us uh, here at Christ our Redeemer and for all that God is doing here. I want to thank you for joining us today and I want to invite my son, Gilbert to come now to formally uh, welcome you, uh, our visitors and viewers. Come on, son. One. Good morning, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer, where we're serving Christ and the community. We thank God for you worshiping with us and pray that today's message blesses you. We worship here every Sunday at 10 a.m., and we have Transformational Wisdom Wednesdays at 7 p.m. each week. We we'll pray that when, you, when the invitation to Christ is given, that you'll consider joining us here at Christ Our Redeemer. As always, please be sure to like, follow, and share our Facebook page. God bless each of you today. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you so very much, Gilbert, for welcoming our visitors and viewers. Uh, uh, it's always a pleasure. I'm so glad you're here at home this summer, uh, being a blessing into God's people just by sharing in the announcement, sharing in the service. You've always been a big help, and I thank you for that. Uh, we are have a few announcements this week. Uh, just starting with tomorrow, be sure to go out and celebrate Juneteenth. We don't have any specific events that uh, we're uh, hosting here at Christ Our Redeemer, but there are events across the Washington, D.C., uh, Virginia, DMV, the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area, and I pray that you'll get out to some of those events this week. And then we pray that you'll join us this Wednesday uh, at 1 p.m. for our corporate prayer call. You can see the number on your screen. And we pray that you'll join us, join in, uh, lifting your voice uh, with us as we pray uh, over the church and the community. We pray that you'll just come with your concerns, share your concerns, and allow us to pray together knowing that as we gather, God hears our cries, God hears our prayers, and God answers by and by. 
And then finally on this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we'll have our Wisdom Wednesday. We'll continue in our faith conversation as we talk about relational faith, relational faith. Please be sure to like and follow and share our page. Uh, as you know, we're continuing to try to ensure that more followers are hearing God's word. So please be sure to share our page with someone. Please be sure to encourage them to follow us at Christ Our Redeemer uh, here on our Facebook page. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you again. It is literally time to give. That's right. It's time to give. You ought to be excited about that. You ought to thank God for the opportunity to give. If you have anything to give, you ought to give God praise because everything that you have god has provided so when you get back into god's church it is because god has given you the ability to give whether it be through tithes or offerings we thank god for your giving here at christ our redeemer you can give one of four ways you should see those on the screen you can give by cash app you can give by givelify you can give by tidely or you can give by the united states postal service you can also go to our website and be able to give any one of those aforementioned ways uh, especially the electronic giver. And we thank God for your giving. We thank God for your giving. Don't you know, sowing here at Christ our Redeemer, you're sowing into fertile ground. As we serve both Christ and the community, we sow back into the community, most of what's given here at Christ our Redeemer so that we can be a blessing to those in need. Let us have a word over our offerings, over our tithes and offerings. God, a word of prayer. God, we thank you for all the, those who are sharing, God, of their tithes and their offerings here at Christ our Redeemer. God, we pray that you would bless them, God, in their giving. God, we pray that they give cheerfully, knowing, God, that this is fertile ground, that you have ordained it so. And God, we ask that you would just continue to shower down blessings upon them as you have promised. God, press down, shaking and rubbing together and running over, God, so that they might be able to be a blessing, not only to themselves, not only to them, to their families, but to the greater community, uh, to, the, to the church, God, in, in Jesus' name. God, we pray that the Tithes and offerings will be multiplied here at Christ our Redeemer, 30, 60, 100 fold, so we can continue to be a blessing as you called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen again. This morning's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, uh, John chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. That's John, the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. And I'll be reading for your hearing from the New Living Translation. And it reads, after saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered to a grove of olive trees. Judas, the betrayer, knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now, with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. Who are you looking for? He asked. Jesus the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. As Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Once more, he asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus, the Nazarene. I told you that I am he, Jesus said. And since I am the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. At this time, I want to invite Sister Sidibe to come to give the Samonic song before I preach from the title, sermon title. Enduring your blessing. Enduring your blessing. If I had to choose a subject, I would have chosen or choose the subject, enduring 
your to your blessing through life's hurts and pains through life hurts and pains come on sister bay sit bay <laughs> thank God and I certainly thank God for the opportunity to stand again behind the sacred desk. I thank God for Sister Sidibe who always ushers in the spirit of the living God and raises the spirit and the atmosphere, if you will, for the preaching moment. I thank God for the opportunity again to preach this word. This is almost a continuation, if you will, from last week's sermon, um, that God, when trouble comes. So not only will we have trouble, but uh, we'll have to endure to our blessing or to your blessing, and we'll have to endure through life's hurts and pains, still along the same theme, if you will, of how God will bring us through, how we have to endure to realize who God has called us to be, what God has called us to do, and the purpose that God has called us to in our lives. I'm trusting God today to bless us through this word. Let me pray, won't you pray with me? God, I thank you for this opportunity to preach your word one more time. I pray now, God, that you would hide me behind your cross. God, speak to me and through me. In spite of me, God, speak. Let the people be blessed in the name of Jesus. By your word, God, use me like you've never used me before. 
so that your people might be blessed. God, that so that hearts might be renewed, minds might be transformed. God, you might share a word that might call someone to live, God, today. Not just live, but live abundantly. In Jesus' name, God, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen again. My brothers and sisters, as I stated last Sunday, I talked about how God keeps us in the times of trouble. This Sunday, God has called me to continue this dialogue, keeping me along the same theme as I preach from this sermon titled, Enduring to Your Blessing, Enduring to Your Blessing, and, and through a subject of coming through life's hurts and pain. So as we endure to our blessings, we have to come through life's hurts and pains. If you're like me, you've probably endured a lot of hurts and pains in your life, especially after six decades here on the planet, plus one year and some change. I've experienced a lot of hurts and pains, a lot of peaks, but also a lot of valleys in my life. And I am not immune. I, I think I said this last week. I'm not immune to trouble. I'm not immune to experiencing life's challenges because I stand behind the sacred desk. Nor are you immune because you are a child of God does not keep the rain from falling upon your head. Because you are a joint heir with Christ to the kingdom of God doesn't preclude you from experiencing hurts and pains in your life. But what God does tell us is how to endure the hurts and pains, how to endure to our blessing. As a matter of fact, he that endures to the end shall be saved, the Bible says. So we're called to endure to the very ends, to our dying breath, we're called to endure, to serve God in spite of life's challenges, in spite of life's troubles, in spite of life's hurts and pains, we're called to endure in faith to God, completing all that God has created us to complete in our lives. In other words, we're called to fulfill God's calling in our life. We're chosen by God and we will go through some troubles. We will go through some pains. We will go through some hurts in our lives. Can I talk about it? I've experienced some painful situations in my life, my life, and you've experienced some painful situations in your life. I, I, I know it's hard to fathom, but sometimes the memory of those hurts and pains can hinder us from going forward. They can hinder us if we allow them and they can stop us in our tracks. In other words, we can sometimes come to a point where we'll stop in our tracks. Some of us will even back up from God in the midst of pain and trouble. But this is not the time to back up. This is the time to pro boldly proclaim the gospel. This is the time to worship God with all you got in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your pain. Cry out to God, knowing that God hears your cry, knowing that God shall answer you by and by. Answer us in our prayers. Answer us in our call for help. Answer us in the time of trouble. Answer us in the midst of life's hurts and pains. And sometimes, the memory of those hurts and pains can hinder us if we allow them to. Some of these hurts are self-inflicted while others can be directly traced to some folks who are closest to us. Don't you know that how, that's how it seems to work? It's not so much that the, the world all around us, although it may be against us, it is, is crushing us and hurting us, although there are systems in place that will do that but it is the people close to, closest to us that hurt us, that, that, that cause pain. Uh, maybe not intentionally, in some cases intentionally, in some cases unintentionally, but it's the people closest to us. Some of those, these hurts and pains we also cause to ourselves by the decisions that we make. Some of you today under the sound of my voice are dealing with some hurts, are dealing with some pains, some past, hurts and pains, as well as potentially some current hurts and pains. Some of you are going through some painful times right now that are challenging you. And God wants you to know today that you've got to endure through these challenges to get to your blessing. That is the word from the Lord. You've got to keep enduring 
to your blessing. This past week, Gilbert and I, my youngest son, were having a conversation concerning um, serious questions. He, he had some serious questions concerning why God would allow us to go through challenges. Why God would allow us to suffer. Why would God allow us to hurt? Why would God allow us to have these painful moments in our lives? Why can't God just make us stay on the path of righteousness? He, he wanted to know, why does God literally give us free will to choose the wrong path, knowing the right path is his way, knowing that God has righteousness and joy and peace and all of those things in his hand? Why doesn't God just steer us? Why didn't, doesn't God just make us stay in the path of righteousness? Why does God allow us to make decisions that will hurt us? Why does God allow others to hurt us? That, that's what Gilbert was asking. And these were serious questions. Why, why does a God allow us to, to follow free will and to fall into divers temptation, to fall into sin that will cause us pain? Gilbert wanted to know why God just wouldn't keep us in the righteous path and not allow us to experience these hurts and the hurts and pains of life. You see, he had experienced some hurts and pains and he was reliving these hurts and pains. And so he wanted to know why God would allow him. And that's a logical question. And I share with him. It, 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 it's, not, um, it's not unusual for you to question God. I said, I've had some of the same questions that you're asking right now. Why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through that? Why am I going through this now? And I thought about these questions and I recognized that this really was just a challenging quandary of faith. And so it's, it's really uh, him wrestling with his faith. And, and when we ask these questions, it's really us wrestling with our faith. And so I responded to the question as I reasoned that God wants us to have the ability to choose the righteous path. In other words, God wants us to choose him over the evil one. God wants us to choose goodness and mercy and righteousness that's found in him over evil and, and, and temptations and, and sin that will crush us. God wants us to choose God instead of choosing the enemy's way. God wants us to choose God's way instead of the world's way, which is under the, 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 the guise of the enemy. We talked about how God gave Adam and Eve uh, uh, a choice, how God gave Adam and Eve free will and how, uh, how they ended up, you know, God gave Adam a commandment, how Adam allowed, uh, or, or they, they fell into the original sin. Both Adam and Eve, or both Eve and Adam, fell into the original sin. Then we talked about uh, how we fall into sin and others, and are hurt by others. And, and we talked about how uh, the, these others can hurt us, and how we can hurt ourselves by sinning, and how others can hurt us by sinning against us. But I share with him that we have to come through all of these things by choosing the righteous path, by choosing God, in spite of our falls, that we have to get up again. And that we have to, in getting up, we have to turn our, turn our eyes towards the hills from which come a help. We have to turn our eyes towards the Lord, in other words. And we have to choose God as we get up. It's not about us falling, but it's about us getting up and choosing the right path and enduring to fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives. I share with him that you, God has a purpose and a plan for you. You were, you, that purpose and plan was formed before you were even formed in your mother's womb. And I share with him that God has a plan for him. And that all of these trials and tests, all of these ups and downs, all of these hurts and pains are working together for our good because we love God and we are called according to God's purpose. And I share with him, the point is not that we fall from time to time, but how we respond to the failures in our lives, how we respond to the falls uh, in our lives, how we respond to the hurts, how we respond to the pains in our lives. That's what's important. I shared that we could do uh, what all that we could do is take one day at a time, knowing that 
All of these things are working together for our good. Knowing that God is working these things out according to his purpose for our lives. We then talked about past hurts, some of the past hurts and not allowing these hurts and pains uh, from them to hinder us from succeeding in life, knowing that God has a plan for us. That's what we've got to get up from. Uh, that's why we've got to get up from our hurts. That's why we've got to get up from our stumbles. That's why we've got to get up from our pains to continue to move forward one step at a time to receive God's blessing for our lives. In another conversation this week I had with a, a friend, uh, we were talking about how those closest to us hurt us, tend to hurt us the most. I was reminded of some of the hurt relationships in the Bible as we dialogued about hurt and pain. I remember Adam, how Adam surrendered his headship and listened to Eve over God's command, watching her being beguiled by Satan while he said nothing, watching her being tricked by the enemy and following her eating from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and evil instead of following God's command. And it damaged their relationship with God. And it damaged humanity's relationship with God. There surely was some fallout from their decision, but it was their decision. And God, they, they, God allowed them to make the decision, yet God still blessed them. There were outcomes based on their decision, but God still blessed them. We see how Cain killed his brother Abel out of jealousy in Genesis 4, 4 through 5. We, we see how God still protected Cain in spite of the heavy price that he had to pay in separation from the garden, in separation from, uh, in other words, in separation from God, God, I should say. You remember how Abram struggled in relationship with his wife, Sarai, even lying to Pharaoh because of her beauty. And as a result, Pharaoh's house was, uh, suffered great plagues. You see that over in Genesis 1, 11 through 13. Uh, you see how Pharaoh's house suffered with plagues as a result of Abraham's relationship with his wife and how he lied about it because of her beauty, thinking that he would be killed because of his wife. Yet the Lord blesses Abraham at the time, Abram and Sarai, anyhow, eventually changing their names to Abraham and Sarah and promising to make a great nation of Abraham through Sarah, making Abraham's seed as numerous as the stars in the heavens or of the heavens, that's Genesis 15 and five. Now, I believe that original uh, scripture that I gave you, Genesis one is Genesis 15 instead of Genesis one. And I'm talk talking about Abraham. Um, and so we thank God for um, what God is doing and has done through the relationships. And, but th those are some hurt things going on in those relationships. Adam and Eve, they have some hurt things going on in that relationship that causes them to fall. Cain and Abel, Cain kills his brother. That's a hurt relationship. Of course, Ab Abel is not around. His blood cries out from the ground. Sarai and, and, and Abram and Sarai have a hurt relationship because of her beauty. And even to the point where even, even as God promises that to make them a great nation, as they are older, they both laugh at it, although Sarah ends up lying about it and saying, I didn't laugh. God still blesses them, blesses both of them. Sarah becomes the mother of nations as a result of what God is doing in their lives. So God continues to bless them in spite of the hurt relationship. You know, it's a hurt relationship when Sarai decides to decide for Abraham how God is going to bless them and gives her handmaiden, Hagar the Egyptian, to have a child. And, 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 and Abram follows her advice and, 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 and uh, Hagar conceives a child, Ishmael, and it causes all kinds of trouble. There are outcomes for those decisions that we make, but that's a hurt relationship. You remember how Joseph's brothers treated him because of his dreams and, and visions, uh, and, and eventually, you know, how they sold him into slavery as a result of his dreams and visions. But eventually the Lord blesses them 
because of Joseph's dreams and visions. And you remember how David, David's family, when, when how they initially excluded him from, from the feast with Samuel, as Samuel came to anoint the next king of Israel, they left David out in the field. See, he's, and, and eventually Sam, Samuel will have to ask Jesse that had David come from out the field. You remember how David's brothers treated him after he was anointed by Samuel. When he came to the battle of Goliath, bringing PBJs and cheese sandwiches. You remember how they treated him. They treated him with disdain. They, they, they joked about him saying he, he just wants to be in the spotlight. You remember how they treated him. And, and, and he would be the next king of Israel. And as a result of his blessing, they were blessed. Yes, we will be hurt and experience pain sometimes by those closest to us. But God wants us to know today, God wants you to know today that he's going to bless you through it all and that you've got to endure to receive your blessing. In our text today, we see Jesus there being betrayed by one of his disciples, Judas, who was one of the 12. He is there with soldiers, the Bible says. He is there with Roman soldiers and temple guards, and they're there with blazing torches, blazing lanterns, and, and weapons. They've arrived at the Olive, Olive Grove where, where Jesus would gather with the disciples. They've arrived there because Judas has told them this is where Jesus would more than likely be. And he betrays Jesus, someone closest to him. Can you imagine? Although this is part of God's plan, Judas betrayed him, and it, it, and it's still, I'm sure it couldn't prevent Jesus from being hurt by this. Do you know what it feels like to be betrayed by a friend? Someone that you think of as a brother or a sister, to be betrayed by them? That's how Jesus felt. He felt betrayed. He was hurt, even though he knew this was a part of God's plan, and he had to carry out God's plan, he still was hurt. And, and so we see three important lessons today from today's text that we can take away when we are enduring to our blessing. Following Jesus's lead on continuing through hurts and pains, enduring all that Jesus had to endure so that not only would he be blessed to be back with his father, but that we would be blessed as a result. First lesson, a point that we see is that some things, there's some things that we have to go through alone. We see that in the text. Although it's not God's desire that we suffer, suffering does help us to grow and mature in faith according to James 1 verses 2 through 4. Suffering is a reality of life in this world. And there are some things that we must endure alone so that we fully turn to God as our ever present help. Sometimes suffering helps us to remember to turn to God. I remember having an experience in my life early on. I was saved at 11, had my, my call. That's a part of my call story. I was saved early, but by my teens, boy, I was on a whole nother path. My teens, through my early 20s, I was on a completely different track. <laughs> as my son was saying, and as we talked about free will, I was choosing the world, absolutely choosing the world. And as a result, I was suffering. I was suffering because of the decisions that I was making, the things that I was doing, because I had kind of, I'd walked away from God. But thank God that God never walked away from me. And, and the blessing is that through the trouble, through the hurts, through the pains, through the suffering, I was able to turn back towards God, rededicate my faith in the rest of this history. Not that I don't go continue to go through trials and tests and troubles. It's just that I know in the time of trouble who to turn to. I know that in the time of trouble that God shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle. In, in his pavilion, he shall keep me. In, the, in his hand, he shall keep me. In the cleft of his side, he'll keep me in the midst of trouble, in the midst of life's pain, in the midst of life's hurt, in the midst of suffering, 
sometimes in silence, God has taught me to turn to him. And so we know that suffering helps us to lean and depend on God. As Psalm 23 says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And that's the first part of the point that we, when, when we're going through alone, that, that we need to remember that God is with us in the midst of the valley. In the midst of the pain, God is with us. In the midst of the suffering, God is with us. In the midst of whatever you're going through, know that you're not going through it alone, but that God is there with you in the midst of it. Then you can realize that God will be a rod to beat back the enemy, that God will be a staff to keep you from falling over, to prop you up on every leaning side. That's when you can realize it, when you realize that God is with you in the midst of your struggles, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your hurts, God is with you. So although we're facing the issues individually, alone individually, God is with us. God is there protecting us and propping us up on every leading side. Jesus had to bear the cross alone. There in the garden, he alone needed to be arrested because he had given his word that none of those whom God had given him would be lost, save Judas, who betrayed himself along with Jesus gave up his calling, gave up his life literally by betraying Jesus. Jesus had to bear the cross alone, yet God was with him even in the midst of his arrest, in the midst of his scourging, in the midst of his beating, in the midst of him being spat upon, in the midst of his clothes being gambled for, in the midst of all of this trouble, God was with him. He gave his word that he would lose not a single one of those who God gave had given him. Yes, you and I have to bear our cross alone, but always remember that God is with us. And that is the first lesson that we take away from the text. God is with us in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our hurt, in the midst of all that we're going through, God is there. The second lesson that we see from the text is right there in verse 10. Verse 10, it says, Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave. <laughs> That's what Simon Peter did. And, 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 and so what we learn from this is that others will try to in intervene. And, they, and they, they want to help you, but they're not really helping you. They think that they're helping you, but they're not really helping you. Peter draws, off, draws his sword and cut off, cuts Malchus's ear off, believing that he's helping Jesus. He, he, believing that the revolution has begun. The revolution won't be televised, and I'm here hacking away with my sword. I pulled my sword from the sheath, and I'm here because I know, like the other disciples who believe, that Jesus is here to start the revolution, and we're gonna, we shall overcome. <laughs> he, he was ready to start the revolution. And, and, and he, he, he thinks he's doing the right thing, but he's not. He's not helping Jesus in this case because Peter, although he's ready to fight and die for his beloved friend and brother, on the surface, it appears that Peter is helping Jesus from being arrested, but think about it. Peter is intervening in God's plan for Jesus and for humanity. Jesus has to go through this for all of our sakes. And Peter is getting in the way. Peter could have been hurt or killed himself based on his reaction to the situation. Peter could have got the other disciples hurt or killed based on his reaction to the situation. He, the, he could have got others hurt, killed, or, or arrested. And, and we wouldn't know Christendom the way that we know if God had allowed it. But God didn't allow it. Jesus spoke up in this case and told Peter, plainly, put your sword away. Put it back in the sheet because 
I put, put it back into a sheet. I have to drink from this cup. I have to drink from this cup. Sometimes there are people who are close to us that will attempt to intervene on our behalf when we're going through some of life's most difficult challenges. And I know that they feel that they're doing what's right for us. I know that they're feeling like they're supporting us as a friend or a brother or as a sister, but they, they will share with you based on their experiences, based on their perspective, but they aren't really helping you. They're trying to, but they're, in these times, they're not really helping you. In these times, we've got to learn to pray. We've got to learn to turn to the one who will lead us through the trouble. We've got to turn to the one who will help us to endure, knowing that God will work this out for our good. We've got to trust God more than ever when we're going through some of life's greatest challenges, when we're going through some of life's most difficult situations, when we're going through some of the gravest hurts in life, some of the deepest pains in life, things that scar us for life, we've got to learn to lean and depend on God. The other voices will be there. And, and, I, and I know they feel like they're helping you, but you've got to learn to lean, and we've got to learn to lean and depend on God in these most challenging times. That's what we learn from Peter in the text. That's what we learn because Jesus tells them. And that's our final lesson for today. Jesus tells us that, that, that there's a blessing and shows us through his example that there's a, there's a blessing on the other side of the hurt. There's a blessing on the other side of your hurt. There's a blessing on the other side of your pain. You have to endure to receive it and to achieve it. And, and all that God has ordained and purpose for your life, you got to endure through the hurt. You got to endure through the pain. Jesus asked Peter, shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? <laughs> That's what he asked him. He, Peter, put your sword back in the sheath and Shall I not drink from this cup the Father has given me? In other words, Jesus has to go through this trial. Jesus has to go through this pain. Jesus has to be arrested. He has to go through the hurt to get to the other side. Jesus had to be beaten and scourged so that we could be healed of our hurts and pains. Jesus has to die on the cross so that we could be freed up from our sins and transgressions, so we could be forgiven and the debt of our sins and transgressions would be paid off. Why? So God could raise him up from the dead, so that Jesus' resurrection would show us that nothing can separate us from God, not even death. Sin and death were overcome at Calvary. Not only that, but Jesus had to ascend into heaven so that we could receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to endure through our failures, to endure through our hurts, to endure through our pains, to, to endure to our blessing or God's purpose for our lives. That's why Jesus came from heaven to earth, to show us the way. That's why he went from the earth to the cross so our sinful debts would be paid from the cross to the grave and from the grave to the sky. That's why we lift God's name on high so that we will would, would endure to our blessing. That's why we, we, we praise God in the midst of our hurts and pains so that we will endure to our blessing, realizing God's purpose for our lives. We cry out to the Lord in the midst of pain and trouble so we can endure realizing God's purpose for our lives. We, we trust God in the midst of the hurts and the pains so that we will endure and realize God's purpose for our lives. God has called us before we were formed in our mother's wombs, purposed us. Won't you endure today, realizing that the pains and trials and tests and, and the hurts are, are just temporary seasons that God will bring you through them and that you have to endure them, knowing that God will be with you even until the ends of the earth, knowing that God will be there with you to help you to endure, shaping you and molding you to be all that God has called you to be. 
the doors of the church are open. Come to Jesus today. Let God help you through life's hurts and pains. It starts with relationship. It starts by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, knowing the name of God, knowing the revelation of God's word in your life, knowing that God's got you through the midst of your hurts and pains, that God will bring you through. Come on now, come on, pray this prayer with me. God, I believe that you sent your only begotten son so that I might be receive the promise of salvation today. I believe that Jesus suffered, bled, and died on that cross and got up from the dead so that I might be redeemed and restored in you. I believe that Jesus ascended into heaven so that I might receive power from you in the midst of life hurts and pains. So I would be able to get up from life's trips and falls and endure to see your plan for my life. By faith, God, I trust you today with my life. I trust you, God, that you'll bring me through every trial, every test, every hurt, and every pain. And I won't let them hinder me from being who you called me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. If you prayed this prayer of salvation for the first time, I want you to click on the link in the contact uh, in the comment section and fill that out so that we can pray with you, so that we can connect with you. You can go to our website and, and, and click on the contact link and fill out the information there as well. And we will contact you and pray with you. I want you to know that God will be with you in the midst of your hurts and pains. I want you to know that God is with you always, even until the ends of the earth. I pray that you receive Jesus today. Click on the link, come on today. Come on, give your life today to Christ. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word once again, to hear from heaven knowing that we will have troubles, knowing that we will have hurts, knowing that we will have pains, some self-inflicted, some by others closest to us, that we can get up from them and that God, you will be there with us, protecting us like a, as a rod and a staff, that you will be there with us through the hurts, through the pains. God, that we won't let them hinder us or stop us. We won't back up, but we'll continue to move forward one day at a time, one step at a time, in your design purpose for our lives, in your will for our lives. God, in Jesus' name, we come to you today confessing you as Lord and Savior and believing in faith that we are safe and secure in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen again. Well, saints, short message today. I pray that you receive God's blessing in and through it. I pray that you go back and look at this text one more time and think about the sermonic points and the lessons that God is sharing with us today. And I pray that you glean from it and that you grow from it and that you don't back up and that you don't stop in your tracks because of life's hurts and pain. Keep on keeping on. God be with you and keep you. Let us have our final word of prayer. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling flat on our faces and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen again. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I pray that you have a wonderful week. Don't forget to celebrate Juneteenth tomorrow. God bless you.